All right, oil prices are rising ahead of this week's OPEC meeting in Vienna. Here now is Scott Clemens, Chief Investment Strategist at Brown Brothers Harriman. So, Scott, this is a big meeting because a decision is expected on whether or not those OPEC production cuts from six months ago will be extended. How do you see this meeting playing That's out? That's right. It's a big meeting for two reasons, one in and of itself. And secondly, it's a pretty light week for news, so that draws a lot of attention to the OPEC meeting. Uh, I think they'll extend the cuts that were put in place about six months ago. Uh, the interesting thing to me is how OPEC's usual play of reducing demand in order to boost prices hasn't really worked or at least worked yet. Part of that's because there's a pretty big inventory buildup that has to be worked off. Part of it is because Saudi's no longer the swing producer in the global oil markets. It's the U.S. It's and you're, US. you're seeing rig count rise week after week after week in the U.S. Right. So interestingly, game theory would indicate that as Saudi Arabia or as OPEC cuts production, the U.S. simply takes up the slack supply. And that's precisely what we've seen happening. I don't think that's going to come to an end. And do you have any targets on West Texas Intermediate for the end of the year? Not particularly, but I do think that because of the increasing efficacy of technology, technology and mm -hmm. fracking and tight sands and horizontal drilling, all the things that we're well familiar with, that brings the finding costs down of domestic supply. That puts a lid on oil prices about where they are, $50, $55 a barrel. Mm. And we should also point out that OPEC as a whole is producing 31.9 million barrels a day. Back in November of last year, it was 34.1 million. So you're seeing that production come down, but like you said, not, right. not enough to really move the needle on it's prices. It's coming down there. It's going up here. Mm. I mean, it's simply uh, uh, an exchange of supply. Now, back to your earlier point about the lack of news in the markets. I mean, this could certainly exacerbate the market's fears about Washington because they don't necessarily have enough fundamental factors to focus on. That's right. We've gotten through the bulk of the first quarter earnings season. So, so there's no new news, really new news coming out on that. The next big macroeconomic data is the labor market report, which is a week from this Friday. That'll influence what the Fed does in June. Other than Fed minutes on, on Wednesday of this week, we get a jobless claims report on Thursday. It's a pretty light news week in terms of fundamentals. That raises the risk that the market over-responds to some other development, be it political, be it geopolitical, who knows? It, we could be in for a rocky couple of weeks. Well, and just because President Trump is overseas doesn't mean those media leaks will stop. I mean, we could still get more that move the markets. Of course, the news headlines keep being printed. That's all right. right. So we'll be watching how all this plays out. Scott Clemens from Brown Brothers Harriman, thanks for coming by. Anytime. All right, I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.